Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to the today's daily dose. I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Guba. I am a cardiologist, and I am also the mentor for teaching general medicine in exams like PGI, AIMS, the JIPR, and as well as NEET PG. So, as the part of today's daily dose, the question is: the following are the features of SLE except the options are sterile vegetation on valve cusps, Raynaud phenomenon. atherosclerosis and pulmonary fibrosis so you take the first option the sterile vegetation on the valve cusps see it is nothing but your endocarditis in systemic lupus erythematosus you will have what is called pancarditis part of that the endocardium is also affected which is called libman sachs endocarditis so sterile vegetations will be there in the inferior surface of the valve in case of libman sachs endocarditis so which is the correct option so the presence of the sterile vegetation on the valve cusp is correct raynaud phenomenon raynaud phenomenon can also occur in these individuals as a part of your premature atherosclerosis so let me tell you that in patients with sle they will have premature atherosclerosis due to apla syndrome right so what is your apla syndrome apla syndrome is anti phospholipid antibody syndrome and that is the clinical scenario where there is high chances of the thrombus formation so because of high chances of thrombus formation the blood vessels they get coagulated or accumulated with the thrombus resulting in either myocardial infarction or cerebrovascular accident or the individual can also develop this particular raynaud's phenomenon So Raynaud's phenomenon is a feature of your SLE, and development of premature atherosclerosis is also the very important feature in patients with the systemic lupus erythematosus. And the patients with SLE, they can have coronary artery disease, and they can have the myocardial infarction being developed. And what is the reason for that? The reason for that is because of premature atherosclerosis or due to underlying vasculitis. Right, are due to underlying vasculitis. So the first three options are completely correct. And what is that which is left out? That is your pulmonary fibrosis. So pulmonary fibrosis is the one which is not seen in patients with the SLE. Right, which is not seen in patients with the SLE. So you take the lung involvement in SLE. Lung involvement in the SLE is in the form of cirrhosis. And what is that? That is in the form of the pleural effusion. so not only pleural effusion the individual can also develop pericardial effusion as well and the other important lung manifestation is this is a very very important multiple choice question that is most common lung involvement in sle is your pleuritis this is a very important multiple choice question right then the individual can also have alveolar edema and as well as alveolar hemorrhage and in some patients they can also have chronic interstitial fibrosis and rarely right it is a rare involvement of your lung in patients with sle that is nothing but shrinking lung syndrome right so the, let me spend 2 minutes on this shrinking lung syndrome shrinking lung syndrome is the characteristic feature in patients with sle and why does that occur that is because of the antibody formation against the diaphragm right so that will result in what is called diaphragmatic myopathy right that will result in what is called diaphragmatic myopathy so because of diaphragmatic myopathy they will have the paralysis of your diaphragmatic muscles and thereby once the diaphragm is paralyzed the dome of the diaphragm you can make out that is exaggerated or elevated so that will push the lung and that will make the lung to get completely shrinked right that will make the lung to get completely shrink and if you do a pulmonary function test in these individuals the pulmonary function test it will show restrictive changes right pulmonary function test show restrictive changes but this is one of the rare complication in patients with the systemic lupus erythematosus so the one that is not seen in patients with the sle is your pulmonary fibrosis is not seen right pulmonary fibrosis is not the feature of your systemic lupus erythematosus and if you see the next question what is the true regarding sle in children the options are skin pigmentation is more common there is no gender difference renal involvement is more common cardiac involvement is more common so let me tell you that what will be the true statement regarding the sle in children 
See, pediatric lupus, it constitutes nearly around 20% of all the caseloads of your systemic lupus erythematosus. And the children, what will be the manifestations in SLE? The more frequent manifestations in SLE is either lupus nephritis or pancytopenia as a part of your hematological involvement or the individual can have the seizures or psychosis. That is your CNS involvement. These are the more frequent systems which are involved in children with systemic lupus erythematosus. And all of these particular children, how do you treat? They require the corticosteroids. And some of them, they also require even immunosuppressive drugs as well. So corticosteroids, they are the mainstay of treatment in patients with SLE in children. Mortality rates, if you see, yes, in pediatric SLEs, the mortality rate is comparatively very high compared to that of the adult population, right? And uh, when directly comparing the pediatric SLE to the adult SLE, the inflammatory rashes, including the typical malar rash, are significantly more common in children. So, malar rash in some of my previous MCQs on the daily dose, I have discussed about the malar rash, right? So, this malar rash is very common in children with SLE than compared to that of the adults with SLE. Like some exceptions, exceptions are the photosensitivity and discoid skin lesions which are prominently found with SLE in case of children, right? So, indeed, the isolated discoid lupus erythematosus is uncommon in childhood. See, the discoid lupus erythematosus is different, but this discoid lupus erythematosus in children will occur along with the photosensitivity, but isolated DLE is uncommon in case of the children, what the textbook says. Now, you take the first option. First option says, like, uh, the presence of skin pigmentation, but the first option does not mention about the skin rash. So, that is the reason why your first option is completely ruled out. So, what will be the answer in this question now? The true statement regarding the SLE in children, renal involvement is more common in patients with SLE in children. So, this is about the daily dose discussion on the very important topic of SLE. So, I hope you might have liked this particular video. So, please subscribe to this particular daily dose to get the daily updates. Thank you very much.